yeah, I went out driving last night, you know, for the first time in a long time because, you know, I had to do my car repair. I was on Lyft for a little bit and I jumped on Uber, you know, did one ride on Uber for like 15 bucks. I was downtown, had to shoot the Tempe. So I took a little $15 hop because I had to get back down there where it was surging. But it was just basically a bunch of short rides. It wasn't a lot out there. They had a lot of nature hikes going because they had like a, a Colorado Rockies game going. And there were tons of nature hikes going all the way to Gilbert, all the way to Chandler, all the way far into Scottsdale. Didn't take none of them. Because I didn't want to get way out there, didn't have to dead mile it all the way back home. I mean, waste of gas. I haven't put gas in my car in a couple of weeks. I got about a quarter tank left. But I was like, you know what, I'm just going to you know, drive down a little bit. I think I still got 80, 90 miles left on the tank. And I was like, yeah, I'm just going to park it for the night. I think I end up making like about $115, $120 called it good my first ride was pretty cool because i actually went to the airport something i didn't want to do went to the airport lady was there a couple of kids her husband and stuff so i loaded their luggage into the trunk with my bad back they gave me a ten dollar cash tip at the hotel so that was pretty cool but the rest of the night it was i stayed in the car just kind of cruised around picking up people you know dropping them off quick little bar hops all night picked up a cool guy with an audi we kind of checked this car out but i wanted to kind of go over what's going on in Minneapolis so now New York is supporting Minneapolis New York is saying we're gonna come down there and help you guys set something up this is what they said happening today a rideshare co-op based in New York is announcing it's launching services right here in Minneapolis in the coming weeks this is of course in response to Uber and Lyft threatening to end services here on May 1st following a new ordinance that was passed by the Minneapolis City Council that would boost driver pay Pauline Lee live in the newsroom this morning with a closer look at what this all means, Pauline. Hey, good morning, guys. Yeah, it's called the Drivers Co-op, and it's said to be the world's first driver-owned rideshare platform. It originally launched in 2021 in New York City. Well, since then, there's been more than 12,000 drivers that have joined, providing more than 300,000 trips in both the Big Apple as well as Denver. Now, the co-op plans to partner with the Minnesota Uber and Lyft Drivers Association to launch a driver-owned platform here in Minneapolis before May 1st. According to the co-op, website members make 8 to 10 percent more each trip than on Uber and Lyft and profits go back to the drivers as dividends. Now, this comes of course as the Minneapolis City Council could reconsider that newly passed ordinance at its uh, April 11th meeting and both Republicans and Democrats in the state legislature they're considering rideshare bills of their own. Now we do expect to hear from the co-op's founders as well as local drivers and riders at a press conference planned for this afternoon. We'll of course have updates on the news later today but Time is a ticking, guys. We have yes. just yeah. a little over a month before that May 1st deadline. Yeah, very interesting idea, though. Mm -hmm. All right, Pauline, we'll look forward to hearing more. Thank you. I've been telling you drivers, get your shit together. Everybody, get your shit together. Have profits, because it's going to take some time. You're going to need a couple of days off to get situated with any new app you might choose. If you got to get any new permits or any new inspections going, you've got to have something in the bank. You might have to take three, four days off. If you're not driving at high profit margins, you're not going to be able to take three, four days off. You're going to be driving wire to wire. You're going to be doing plantation economic driving again. We just got to go out there and do a ton of rides, dump a ton of gas, put a lot of wear and tear on your car. For what reason? Just to get on another app. By the time you get on that app, your car is going to be broken down. You ain't going to be able to function. You're going to be like, man, I worked on this app for three months and then my car went out. Well, that's because you let Uber run you ragged pretty much. Don't let Uber and Lyft run you ragged. Do your short trips. Do your surges. Get your tips. Don't beat yourself up trying to make this money because you're working in reverse. You're hustling backwards. You're thinking you're making all this money, all these profits you get. Now you got to go give it to a shop. You're like, man, I just had $1,000 in the bank. What happened? Oh, man, I done blew out my shocks. I did this driving like crazy. Had to go get my $1,000, man. You're driving backwards. You should be adding money, going up every time. Every month you should be adding a little bit to the bank. If it's $500, if it's $800, if it's $1,000, every month add a little bit to the bank. Because that's what's going to carry you to the next level when it's time for you to get another app. Because if you don't have all that money sitting in the bank, Uber and Lyft going to have you by the balls, basically. They're going to tell you, oh, we got a surge out right now. You need to come back drive for us. Or oh, we got a bonus coming up. You get, you know, $25 for 20 rides. We got that. And you're going to have to say, man, well, I need that money because I just put all that money into my car. You got to be smarter than these apps. You got to get there and drive right. Now, I welcome all these other apps trying. Uber and Lyft really thought that they were going to, like, have everybody, oh, please don't leave, please, man. Just No, the only people that they got doing that are the politicians whose pockets they're in. 
Who's these little business partners whose pockets they're in? Everybody else is like, leave. We don't care. Go. We tired of you any damn ways. You've been ripping us off long enough. You've been playing our economy long enough. Get out of here. So now that all these other apps are coming in, it's giving drivers of, of strength. It's giving them like, okay, we could do this, man. We could do this without Uber and Lyft. We got a lot of people pulling for us because people know the transportation market makes a lot of money. Uber and Lyft have proven that. The transportation industry can make a lot of money if done right. It can make a lot of money for the drivers, but it can also make a lot of money for the apps. One thing I don't like about these apps, they're talking about some, you know, 10% more. 10% is not a whole lot. Now, if it was like 100% more, where instead of us getting $6 for a ride, now we're getting $12 for the ride, that's a lot. 10% is not a lot. Because if you're telling me oh, I used to get $6 for these rides, now you're going to get $6.60 for these rides. Then we're in the same boat. That's the one thing I didn't like about that whole ordeal about them throwing that percentage out there. Don't tell me, oh, yeah, we're going to give you $10 for this ride. 10% of that is only $1. So now instead of $10, I'm getting $11. I mean, what's the whole point of me going with you if all you're going to give me is a dollar more? It don't make a difference. I mean, tell me you're going to get, you know, 50% more. So instead of $10, you're going to get 15 Tell me 100% more. Instead of $10, I'm going to get 20 At least come with, don't tell me 10% more. Because $10 is now going to get me $11. $12 is going to get me $13.20. $6 is going to give me $6.60. $7, $7.70. I can't do nothing with 10%. 50%, 100%. Let's talk some real numbers here. This is basically all the driving I did last night on Lyft. Made like, you know, $85. Then I got the $10 tip to make it $95. Then I got the $15 on Uber. So that made me, what, $110. So I made $110 last night. So I went like 31 miles on Uber. Basically all in Tempe. I didn't do anything outside of Tempe on Lyft. And... Let me see if I can go. How was my percentage right here? I said I made 110% of what they were charging or whatever. What if? So almost two hours, rough running, probably about 40 bucks an hour, damn near. Nine rides. Uh, let me see exactly what type of rides was I doing. Let me show you the type of rides I was doing. Like I said, these were all quick rides. My very first one was, oh, uh, then they had that turbo on there. I was laughing at that shit. I was like, turbo, come on. I think this is my first one. This is the airport where I got the $10 tip on that one. Yeah, so that's my first ride. She gave me 10 bucks, so I made 25 bucks on that. So 25 bucks for like nine miles, almost 10 miles. But I was at home, went to the airport, then dropped her off at the hotel right above the highway. And that was her, her husband and kids and stuff like that. They were all there. They took two cars, actually. So I was one of the cars that was there, helped them load the luggage. That was a pretty easy one. Then, like I said, after that, it was just a bunch of short rides. You know, I always get ride bonus on everything I do. Then it was giving me like the turbo, 24 cents. See, that's what I mean. 10% of the ride, $2.49 was the ride. $2.49 was the fare. That's how crazy it is. And so I'll show you what the person paid. So $2.49 was the fare. They paid $5.88. $2.49 was the fare. And I got 24 cents for turbo. I'm telling you, 10% don't mean a lot. Like when people throw the, oh, you're going to get 10% more. It don't mean nothing. It, it's just like, okay, do you know what? 100% is twice that amount. I'd be getting $5 and like 90 cents almost, almost, you know, $5 even. But instead, you're going to give me 24 cents. Like, come on, man, don't do not do me like that. Yeah, man, we're going to give you like, nah. Then my bonus was five fifty on that. That's the only reason why I took it because I had that big surge sitting on there. But, yeah, and I, I think this is my last ride here. This little quick ride. This was my ride headed back towards home. So I picked up some kid next to ASU and I started bringing him back home. I ended my night right there because I was headed back in my direction anyways. So like I said, all my rides were real short. You know, six bucks, seven bucks. I mean, here was a good one right here that had a $5 tip on it. That was like almost three miles, 14 bucks right there. And I mean, they were all like real quick. Everything was like short right in Tempe. I didn't leave Tempe for anything. And that's how I tell people, you know, find your reason. I got $2 cancel here. I didn't get a cancel for that one, though. They be keeping my cancels. Like, they ain't give me nothing here, but gave me $2 there. Whatever, rag them up and motherfuckers. What if, what if? Like, here's another short trip I did, like, at about 1030. About two miles, eight bucks. Like I said, I just pick up people. I was standing right next to the person. That was funny. They were right there. So I said, okay, I'll take you. And they paid $8.99, and I got eight oh two out of the eight ninety nine. dollars It's fine, no problem. But I was right next to him, so I couldn't help but pick him up. So I just shot him straight down to the street, straight, him, uh, straight down the street to the uh, hotel that they were staying at. A lot of easy short trips, man, easy short trips. But that's usually how I drive on Lyft. Now, my one Uber trip, let me see if I can get into Uber. Yeah, my one Uber trip was this one. 
is that $15 trip. That was it. No tip. I, they probably gave me a tip. They probably didn't give it to me. I picked them up. They were at the game last night. So I picked them up, brought them back to Tempe. And that's when I started doing my Tempe rides because it was surging down in Tempe again. So it was all easy stuff, man. Just easy stuff. I didn't do nothing too complicated. And I, I don't know what that 225 is. I have no idea. They probably really didn't give it to me. I didn't look at my bank to see. It was only two bucks. But if you find a region, stay in your region. Don't go nowhere. Stack as many rides as you can stack in that area. Get ride bonuses. See if you can get tips out of it. You don't got to be doing these nature hikes, you know, be doing $14 for like 20, 30 miles. You don't got to be doing that. It, it's not worth it. You can make that money, you know, doing short hops. Like I said, I'd rather do something like, give me something short. Here, here's a little one right here. I'd rather do something like this. Give me two miles for seven bucks, $3.50 a mile. So if you get $3.50 a mile, for every 10 miles you go, you're going to get $35. So you're getting a 10 mile offer for thirty five dollars basically is what you're getting. And I just keep doing that over and over again. Just like I'm not going nowhere. I'm just staying right there by ASU. Just keep taking staying in the surge zone, stay in the surge. You can set your filter if you want to. I don't because it might take me to another surge. And a lot of people say, well, set your filter. Well, if it takes me from one area of surge to another area of surge and the money is right, I might take it. That's why I don't use my filter. I leave my opportunities on the table. But. Like I said, I'm, I'm normally, I just don't leave my area. I just stay in my area, just keep doing circles and shit like that. And here's, that, that's a little, here's one right here. Let me see, what was this one? This is uh, almost 10 miles, 15 bucks. That was another airport ride. Oh, that was the first one where she gave me the $25. Never mind. She gave me a $10 tip. Never mind. I was thinking that was something else. I remember my rides, man, because I'd be like out there cruising. Okay, here's one. Let's see, what this was that 10% that turbo. All right, so this was about 7 miles, 11 bucks. So I was, yeah, I was in Tempe picking a guy up from work. He was just getting off work and he was pretty cool though. Actually, he was cool. I was taking him over to Mesa to a hotel in Mesa and he was getting off work and he was just going back to his hotel. He only works there on like weekends. So he was like, yeah, I just come stay in Mesa on the weekends because I can get to him from work a lot easier. But cool guy, cool guy. He paid almost 20 bucks for that ride, $18. And the fare I got was $647. Out of that, he paid $18.66. I got six dollars and forty seven cents. If I did not have that bonus, I would have got six forty seven plus the sixty five. I'd got like seven dollars out of the eighteen. They would have took like eleven dollars out of that. But like I said, that's what these apps do, man. I could have converted that if I would if I said, hey man, you see I do this ride for like you know ten fifteen bucks. He could he would have probably gave me fifteen bucks to do it. Would have been four dollars more. I mean if he would have tipped me three four dollars, it would have been the same. But like I said, he probably. Tip me and Lyft kept the damn tip. That's how these raggedy motherfuckers is. That eighteen dollars is probably everything. And Lyft was like, "Hey, just keep the tip, man, because he keeps reading ride bonuses." I don't like these ragged ass apps. I swear.